We talk a lot about how you should save your money, but there are times when it makes sense to spend money wisely. One of those ways is through outsourcing. Miranda Marquette from Planting Money Seeds joins the show to share some of the options available to you to free up time, build your business, or just offload some tasks to improve your lifestyle. Welcome to the Maple Money Show, the podcast that helps Canadians improve their personal finances to create lasting financial freedom. If you're a regular listener, you know the importance of checking your score to improve it. Our sponsor, Borowell, released a study that found a correlation between the frequency of checking your score and credit score increase. If you want to raise your credit score, get your free report at maplemoney.com slash borowell. Let's chat with Miranda. Hi, Miranda. Welcome to the Maple Money Show. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Uh, so... I want to talk to you about outsourcing because th- there was a time that 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 you you wrote for some sites for, with me and uh, and and we worked together on other blogs. So you've always been sort of the one of the people that I would outsource to, but now you you've uh, you, you you've turned that around and and I know you're outsourcing a lot uh, in, in your your business now. Yeah, but not the writing. I still write. Yes. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> so um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, I. I yeah, that's true. And so one of the things that people outsource to me is the writing. And so in my business, that means that since I'm writing uh, for myself and for other people, I need to outsource all the other things. So so one of the things that I found that I like to do in my business is to like outsource the social media, uh, outsource, well, let's let's say the blog management, right? So like we partner on a couple sites and you take care of like the back end stuff. That's sort of like outsourcing, not really, but kind of. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and, and then, you know, other things that I outsource to my business, it's a podcast editing. Um, and I think you do that as well, but yeah. So, so I outsource the podcast editing and I outsource social media. I outsource my taxes, like the business taxes and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that I outsource that are kind of these mundane tasks that aren't particularly profitable, but they're, they kind of go part and parcel with running a business, especially if you're running, running one online or in, in like kind of the online media realm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, being able to outsource those things is really important to free up time to do things that make more money. Exactly. That's what, that's what I was just thinking was uh, <laughs> even running a business, you don't want to run up your expenses for no reason. So, so how, how does this allow you to like when, when you're, when you're sort of outsourcing something to, to free up your time, how does this allow you to improve your business? Yeah. So first of all, like social media, it, it's just, it's tedious and it takes forever and it takes a long time. And if you're not super great at it, there's a huge learning curve so what I found is if somebody else is making my, my posts for me for social media and scheduling those and finding the pictures and finding the cute things to say and finding the right hashtags, if somebody else is doing that and say, I pay somebody to do that for like an hour a day. So that frees up five hours a week for me. Mm-hmm. And one article that I write is worth anywhere between 500 and a thousand dollars. And so if I could spend an hour making 500 to a thousand dollars, um, why wouldn't I pay somebody $30 an hour to do my social media? I mean, I mean, that's, that's the calculus there. It's pretty easy. I'm um, kind of the same with the podcast editing, uh, as you know, podcast editing takes a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you record, you have like a 30 minute show, but you, you can edit that podcast for two or three hours for a 30 minute show or an hour show or whatever it is you can take two or three hours editing that. So what if you spent, if you paid somebody else, you pay somebody else, I don't know, $80 or a hundred bucks or whatever it is, you pay them this money to go edit your podcast. And during that time, you do some other business activity that'll bring you more money. So maybe you go out and look for new clients. So I started taking client calls again and talking to clients, consulting with people, and then also uh, writing <laughs> since that's the most lucrative <laughs> thing that I do. So, so being able to do that and get those two to three hours back was something that makes me four, five, six, seven, sometimes 10 times more than what I'm paying for the podcast editing makes a lot of sense to me. So, so people shouldn't look at it as 
a wasted expense or just shrug their shoulders and say, that's the cost of doing business. It, it actually does lead to, to improving your business. Right. And it, and the, the idea here is you have to actually use that time you've freed up for something that's going to be profitable or something that you're good at. So one of the things that I really liked was, you know, a lot of the time we talk about, oh, we got to turn your weaknesses into strengths. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that takes up a lot of time. (laughs) It takes a lot of time and it costs a lot of money to turn your weaknesses into strengths. No, look at your strengths and say, how can I leverage my strengths to make more money? So focus on the strengths, leverage those strengths to make more money and outsource the weaknesses. So so it, it really does become that situation. And the other thing I found was when I started leveraging my strengths and outsourcing my weaknesses, uh, pretty soon I found that, well, I didn't have to spend the entire two hours or three hours or whatever it was in a business related activity. I maybe only had to spend half that time and I'd make more than my money back. Hmm. And then I'd have extra time to do something I wanted to do, like enrich my life. So, so, you know, uh, hang out with my son, whatever. And so, so I find that, you know, when you start leveraging your strengths and outsourcing your weaknesses, not only do you have more uh, money and you're making more money, you actually also have more time, which to me is a more valuable resource. Um, you know, you can keep trading your time to earn money, but you're never getting that time back. Mm-hmm. So I, I prefer to use my money to buy more time. It sounds great. Uh, I, I do the same, I, especially like the point about uh, sort of not, wor- not not trying to build up your weaknesses. Um, I, I've heard people say, well, if, if you can hire someone that can do the job 80% better or 80, 80% as well as you, why not? But mm-hmm. I, I actually prefer hiring people that can do it better than me, <laughs> not, not, not 80%. Like uh, uh, we've, we've brought on uh, writers um, on, onto, onto Maple Money, like uh, Sarah Lee Kane writes for, for the site and mm-hmm. um, uh, Sean Cooper writes on the site as well. Uh, but but then I'm also hiring. Yep, we we share the same uh, uh, podcast editor, Steve Stewart, and and um, shout out to Steve. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, graphics are hired out. Every everything, I just take care of my content side, and and most stuff. Yeah, otherwise is is outsourced. Um, right. But we're both in the blogging world. How about how about people and podcasting? But how about people with? Uh, other forms of business. I assume like a, a, a virtual assistant could help almost any business. Yeah. So virtual assistants are great. Uh, that's one of the great ways that you can outsource things. Uh, and, and I've used, I've used VAs in the past as well um, because they're great because they can help you manage your calendar, make appointments uh, and do things like that, that you, that can take up your time. Right. I, one of the things I like to use too, is sometimes you're not even outsourcing to a person, but maybe you're outsourcing to an app. So I use the Calendly app and you can get a basic version of her for, of it for free. But once things start getting a little more complicated, it makes sense to pay for it. And paying for a subscription can make sense when you consider how much time do you spend emailing back and forth, trying to nail down a meeting time, right? For your business, Mm -hmm. like whether you're meeting a client, whether you're doing a partner meeting, whether you're trying to pitch somebody, whenever you're doing anything in your business that requires scheduling, like you're going to send a minimum of three emails back and forth, but probably more than that. And you're going to spend a minimum of an hour trying to like figure all this out. Uh, when if you have a scheduling app, you just send it. Or if you have a VA, you just send them to your scheduler. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed a lot um, for a lot of business people right now, having some a person, a VA in charge of scheduling, making travel arrangements, uh, doing basic inter- like doing basic research for you, uh, all of those things. If you have a VA who can do those things, that that cuts into the time you're spending doing them and the hours you waste. Well, it's not really a waste, but it's not the most efficient use of your time. Mm -hmm. Like those are mundane tasks anybody can do. Anybody can book a plane ticket. Anybody can do basic research. Anybody can use the calendar. So anybody can do that. You are the only person who can um, do your high level big ideas. You're the only person who can sell somebody on your next idea. You are the only person in your business who can, you know, has the authority to close the deal or do the big picture things. Like there's a reason why like CEOs aren't doing every little thing under them, right? Yeah. Like there, there's a reason why. And it's because they, they have their time and their energy freed up to do things that actually matter more for the bottom line. 
Well, and you mentioned CEOs. That's the thing I was thinking. It's kind of like having an executive assistant, but but probably mm-hmm. for us, a, a smaller business. Like if your right. your business has maybe no employees, or or you just have a handful of employees, like getting a virtual assistant seems like an easy way to kind of add to that. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, and and then you know another thing that I've been looking into is you know maybe starting to outsource some of that, uh, some of the publicity stuff, you know, I do a lot of my own, I do a lot of my own publicity, which means I don't do any publicity, let's be honest. <laughs> so, so what, you know, if I had somebody else scheduling that, finding that for me, there's a good chance that um, I put that investment in, I would outsource that to them. And it might not, you know, mean big dollars and a direct correlation between money made, but it would mean getting me out there more and then starting to see the results from that. Mm-hmm. And so then it would be worth it because eventually, you know, the, the return on investment would be there. And some of these things, it's hard to measure an immediate return on investment um, with cer- certain things like the, the editing or the VA, you can immediately see, okay, well, now that so-and-so is taking care of this, taking it off my plate, I have an hour each week to do this thing, this this activity I know will bring in X dollars. Mm -hmm. But then there are also, you know, these sort of outsourcing things that you do that may not bring in like a directly correlated X number of dollars for each hour you outsource, but can have a huge impact on your business anyway. Yeah. Like like if you've got someone going out trying to find you uh, press Mm -hmm. opportunities or something, and that could apply for any business as well. Uh, that, that might be something you weren't doing at all. <laughs> so it's hard to show, show a return on investment. Exactly. So yeah, that, that makes sense. And that totally works for, for any business, I would think. Um, another thought I had was what about uh, uh, other ways other businesses could, could outsource um, maybe through things like, like Upwork? Yeah. So um, <laughs> as a writer, and one that works online, I resent these these marketplaces. <laughs> but no, they are good places to find uh, people who can do different things. Uh, Upwork, Fiverr, Elance, uh, 99designs. There are all sorts of places like that where you can find work for people, like work from people who can do tasks for you. TaskRabbit actually mm-hmm. is another one. So there are lots of websites like that that can that they're very low cost. They're really easy to use for somebody who doesn't have a lot of money to begin with to start um, to start outsourcing. So they can do that and they can get a few projects taken care of uh, and they can see how it works and they can free up some time. The only thing you do have to work out uh, worry about with some of those sites is you do run into sometimes folks that uh, don't offer as high a quality. Mm-hmm. As you might want, uh, when you when you start wanting quality and when you can start affording better quality, it helps to actually get in there, um, get some referrals, talk to people you know, and find uh, people who can actually get in there and do a little bit more with a little less direction. Yeah, the the one thing I like about like say uh, an Upwork or or a, a Fiverr is is sometimes the and again, this works for any business. Maybe you want sure. like a, bit, a business card designed or or you want a new company logo. Like all, all that stuff can be done relatively oh, cheap. Oh, yeah. 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 And those are great things like for one-off kind of projects where you mm-hmm. just want a whole bunch of ideas or a whole bunch of options that you can choose from. And that's a great way to uh, do one-off projects. When you're actually doing something like hiring a VA who's going to who maybe you want to go through your email and make like make complex decisions and get to know you and understand how you work, uh, then you definitely want to invest a little bit more money into that uh, because they will be helping you run your life and your business. Yeah. And, and speaking of VAs, uh, if people are just hearing this term for the first time, uh, th- this virtual assistant idea, we're actually going to have uh, Kayla Sloan on uh, a few episodes after, after Miranda. Um, to talk about if you wanted to be a VA, uh, how, how you could do that. So it's, it's 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 an interesting way to make money as well. Yeah, and it's and it's really great. And somebody like Kayla is an excellent VA because she can provide you with you know, <laughs> that that support. Right, it's that ongoing support. Yeah. Um, so let's switch this around. How about in your personal life? Is is there ways that you can outsource to to kind of literally trade money for time more, maybe more than ROI. Yeah, definitely. So uh, my favorite example was cleaning my house and I got a lot of crap from people when (laughs) I first announced, like my family still gives me crap 
uh, when I when I started hiring somebody to come clean my house once a week. So mm-hmm. I do. I hire somebody to clean my house. They come once a week and they clean it. And that is two hours of my life every single week that I now have back. It's great. Uh, but people give me a lot of crap because they're like, well, you can clean your house yourself. It only takes two hours to clean your house. You can do it yourself. Well, yeah, I can do it myself. But what was happening was is I'd have to do it on the weekend or some other time. And my son would do it with me and we'd have this time together, but we weren't having fun together. We were cleaning the house together. (laughs) So I started hiring somebody to clean the house and now we have fun together and somebody else cleans the house and does the not fun stuff. Uh, The other thing I found, so these two hours a week is uh, I could, if I wanted to, I could take and go ahead and like write an article and, you know, one article written is for, and it, you know, it's 10 times, 10 times what I'm paying the cleaning lady. And so I can take some time. I can write an article instead of clean my house, cleaning my house gives me no money. It gives me no pleasure. And I make no memories with my child. So, (laughs) so why do I keep doing it? Well, paying for it returns dividends in my life. So I get lifestyle dividends because I have more time. I I can relax. I can do something with Gavin. I can do any of these things. I can make money. And I also found that with these household things, what I decided to do was devote half of the time I saved to a business activity and half of the time to a lifestyle activity so that Mm -hmm. I wasn't, um, so that I was using this like bought time to enjoy myself as well. And when I started doing that, you know, I started, I ordered a meal planning service and they bring me groceries and now I don't have to go to the grocery store or plan my meals. And that saves me a couple hours a week. Uh, somebody else changes my oil. I know this is a big one. I know in the, the frugal, frugal living world is learn to change your own oil, which is great. If you like changing your oil, then by all means, change your own oil. But for me... <laughs> Like, well, I can sit at the Jiffy Lube for 45 minutes while they change my oil and I will pay them 40 bucks. And in that 45 minutes, I will make 500 bucks. And that is a fair exchange (laughs) for having somebody else change my oil. Um, You know, and taxes. Yeah, I can do my taxes, but my accountant can do them like way better and way faster than I can. And I can take the four hours I would have spent doing my taxes, take two hours and go to a movie with my son, movie and dinner with my son, and take the other two hours and do some business activity. So Mm -hmm. kind of, you know, breaking it up so that, yeah, you're not going to see direct money or, or, well, maybe you are. If you decide to take some of that house cleaning time or the meal planning time or the oil changing time and make money with it instead of doing things you don't want to do anyway. Like <laughs> then you're making then you're ahead. But even if you don't, even if you just buy some time and you buy some time and go relax, go read a book, you know, watch TV. Heaven forbid we watch TV sometimes. Um, <laughs> you know, hang out with your children, go play with your children for two hours. Pay somebody, pay somebody to mow the lawn and take your kids to the park. Um, you know, those are those are dividends in your life that return like in richer and uh, richer relationships, you know, better relationships with your family and your friends. So yeah, I mean, you can use all of that to do nothing but make money or penny pinch and save all the money you can, but what's it doing to your relationships? And are you, are you, are you going to be worse off in your well being later on? Yeah. I like the, I like the idea that, that, it, it can help your lifestyle. I, I know it's not the the most frugal alternative uh, w- when we're convincing people to to save money, but but if you can make it work, to to be able to spend that money makes sense. Like uh, again, I love hiring stuff I can't do well. It, it's it's not even as much about stuff I don't want to do. Um, like uh, I I also would never change my oil. I'd probably break my car somehow. <laughs> so it's, it, it wouldn't even cross my mind. Uh, or or we renovated our our basement. And and I know a lot of people in town. They're they're renovating their own basements. And and for me, it was just like, well, no, mm. it's it's. I can get it done in three months professionally, or I can probably take over a year because I only have so much available time. Mm-hmm. And it would not look as nice. It would <laughs> I would not be happy right. with the end results. <laughs> right, and you wouldn't be sitting in your nice home movie theater right now. You'd still be <laughs> like 
trying to figure out which chairs go where. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it just wouldn't happen. Like there's only so much time in the day. And like you said, you're, you're buying yourself some time, like uh, whether that is, is building up income or just spending it with your family. Like there, you've only got so many hours. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, and I always just say, you know, when you start outsourcing, like you can't outsource all the things like when we're, you know, we're talking frugal and money, like you can't just all of a sudden, and I didn't just all of a sudden wake up one day, throw a bunch of money at everything and say, and I'm done. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really something that you have to kind of plan for and pick and choose to begin with and find like that one thing that will buy you an extra hour or an extra two hours in the week and just start with that one thing and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. and, and with all of this, it's not just about just throwing money everywhere. <laughs> you can, right. you can, you can do things like negotiate for better prices. You can uh, like with the renovations, I, I went to a site called home stars, which kind of, rates everybody so you know you're getting someone decent uh and then when you're talking to them yeah you can you can kind of settle on a price and so so it's not always about making things cost crazy amounts of money something like five or like literally is sometimes five dollars <laughs> or, or 99 designs if if a, if a business needs a logo it's all it's 99 dollars is, is their flat fee at least they, 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 they might upgrade you but uh so yeah it doesn't always have to be big money in some cases this stuff can save you money compared to just like some research can save you money compared to just going out and, and spending the money just because you want to free up that time. Right. For sure. For sure. Um, so can you let people know where they can find you online? Yeah. So you can find me on plantingmoneyseeds.com and mirandamarkwit.com and then um, moneytreepodcast.com. And then of course I'm on Twitter at mmarkwit. Instagram at M Marquette and on Facebook at planting money seeds. So I don't know, Google me. You can Google me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for being on the show. No, thank you for having me. Thanks for listening. And thanks to Miranda for sharing the benefits of outsourcing. You can find show notes for this episode at maplemoney.com slash Miranda Marquette. Tired of just listening and want to stare at some talking heads. You can find videos of all our interviews at maplemoney.com slash YouTube. I plan to have other video series on that channel in the future, so hit subscribe and the notify bell so you don't miss anything.